And we are live. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, you know what the date is. It's the 13th of October, right? When October now. Yep. October. Yep. 13th and of October. Ha- Halloween. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't know how I could have missed the decorations. 13th of October. My name's Wayne. And I'm Kyle. We're the creators of Ghost Maps. And welcome to the latest episode of Dead Air. Um, we've got... I, you see one guest here, but we've actually got two guests today. Um, mm-hmm. Very special guests. But before I introduce our guests, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to introduce to you the person that we're going to be talking about today. Yep. So you've got paper already. <laughs> Don't play, play. Um, we, today, we're going to be talking about Offman Walk. Now, some of you out there might be familiar with who Mr. Offman Walk was. Some of you, the I, I say the young, our younger audience, but even I was not fully aware of the impact of Mr. Offman Walk's work on us yep. until fairly recently, until I picked up a copy of this book. We, you can see. we picked, we up, picked up a copy of this book. We were just saying how we don't share that many books, but this is the one book that two of us have a copy of. Um, so today we'll be talking about Mr. Offman Walk. Now, Mr. Offman Walk was one of Singapore's pioneer politicians, serving as our first minister for social affairs. But before that, and more relevant to what we're talking about, more relevant to us specifically. Um, before that, he became famous in the 1950s as a writer of horror fiction and ghost stories. That's right, in the 1950s. These stories were fantastically popular, making him a household name across the Malay-speaking world years before his political career took off. So we're not just talking about a pioneer politician in Singapore's history, but one of the pioneers of telling ghost stories in Singapore. Um We're very, very, very lucky tonight to have um, our two guests on with us. Um, And they'll be talking about Mr. Offman Walk. First of our guests, I'm going to introduce Lily Offman. Hi, guys. Lily Offman is the daughter of the late, great Offman Walk. She has worked as a travel writer and she edited the collections of her father's work, such as... We've got a lot of books on the table today. Such as... Yep. Malayan Horror, Macabre Tales of Singapore and Malaysian and Malaysia in the 1950s, and Tales of Horror and Mystery, more Macabre Tales from Singapore, Malaya, and Indonesia. These are just two of the books, but we've got a few more down here. A lot of these are out of print, which is why we now have A Moss in the Jungle, a best of collection. If, if you guys know where to get them, uh, let us know. Yeah, the our print ones, we want, yes. to, we want to yes. collect them. <laughs> these, these are not our copies. I wish these were our copies. Yeah, we wish. Uh. These are Lily's copies. Um, joining us, however, he could not, uh, you know, we couldn't have our other guest here with us tonight. He's here in spirit. He's here in spirit and in comments. Yes. <laughs> um, in our audience, we have Ng Yi Sheng. Ng Yi Sheng is a Singaporean writer, researcher, and activist with a keen interest in the forgotten histories and mythologies of Southeast Asia. He's the author of multiple books, including the science fiction and fantasy collection Lion City, which was the winner of the Singapore Literature Prize in 2020. And the editor of A Moss in the Jungle, Classic mm. Ghost Stories by Offman Walk. Lily, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me and Nishing on yes. this show. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. Nishing couldn't be with us. But as long as he's, he is here in his spirit... That fine. That's yes. <laughs> He's here somewhere in the comments. Yisheng, you're in the comments, I'm sure. Um, say hi to everybody while you're there. I like how I'm waving this way as if y'all can see the That's laptop the, off screen. The laptop is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so before we get on to Mr. Offman Walk's work and before we speak with Lily and Yisheng, um, just a couple of things. updates about where we've been. Small things that, you know, some of y'all might know about, but, you know, not that big a deal. We won an award. Yeah. We are award-winning podcast now. We won an award. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it is. It is. I don't know if you guys saw the acceptance speech, but it is truly an honor to be the best Asian hosted uh, podcast in 2022, uh, representing all of the Asian podcasts out there, Yeah. So and being Southeast Asian, which is a niche on its own, and being a horror podcast, which is a super niche, I think is like. (laughs) It's a it's an honor, like It's an honor. It is. And 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 like it, it ties back into you know the, the whole point of this episode as well is to you know do not forget who came before us. Like, yeah. like we were just talking, like if Offman Walk is a modern man right now, he would probably be a very, very good horror podcaster. Yeah. Because he's such a great storyteller, right? Exactly. We were we were just talking, literally <laughs> before you showed up, we were talking about how um he is as much a storyteller as he's a writer. So chances are if podcasts were taken in the 1950s. That would have that might have been his platform. I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, so award-winning yeah. podcast um, at yeah. the People's the, I'm gonna People's it. Choice Podcast the, Award, the 17th annual People's Choice Podcast. Yes, Award. I made sure I write it down and get it correct. 17, so they have yeah. been running it for 17 years. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I didn't even realize podcasts were around for 17 years. Yep. Um. Yeah. So that was our first piece of wonderful news. The other piece of news is that Ghost Map 67 goes online tonight at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. But after we wait till after this episode. After after this episode, uh, trust me, you're gonna want to watch this one. Um, then go ahead and listen to episode 67 of Ghost Maps. We've got another guest narrator for this episode that might be familiar to um, our regular audience members of Dead Air. Mm-hmm. And last piece of um, Hantu updates. Uh, we might have mentioned to you guys before that we. I'm sure we did. We did. Yeah. We did. We mentioned to you before that we're having a live event at. Kizuna mm. Cafe on the 28th of October. For Halloween. For Halloween, of course. Um, and, you know, we hope that you reserve your spot because that's sold out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, well, okay. Yeah. It's sold out on the inside. You know, it's like a, it's like a bar night and you can get, get drinks. They are, they are uh, basically after theme uh, folklorian uh, monsters like uh, the Pontiana Hantu Tete so those drinks are actually named after them and then you know uh, very special drinks uh, and yeah. it will be an open mic session we'll be like basically dead there like yeah. Wayne and I will be on stage telling ghost stories for roughly four hours yes <laughs> and the key difference is this time you guys can join us live yeah. so if you want to tell your stories you can, you're can. you welcome to come on stage you're welcome to yell it out at us from the crowd yeah. preferably come on stage but in Singapore la. yeah if you're uh, in Potong Pasir in Singapore yes. so if like let's, um, the seats are sold out but uh the Kizuna has actually graciously opened it up uh, in a sense whereby you guys can, there's seats outside, like facing uh, the, the the stage. So if you guys are, are still keen to go, I believe that you can actually still make some reservations to sit outside yeah. or like can, you can just walk in on the actual day and then you still can order drinks and then enjoy the horror, horror stories. What's, uh? the, what's the Instagram? <clears throat> Kizuna. At Kizuna SG. Yeah, Kizuna SG. So you Go look for them on Instagram and just drop them a message. Let them know oh, you're yeah. coming. Maybe that might like you know help you secure a better spot and everything. Yeah. All right. We got the updates out of the way. Yeah. Now to our lovely guests. Um, the first question I wanted to ask is uh for Lily and Yixing. So Yixing, um, please write out your answer in there. We'll read it out loud. Y- Yixing said, "Hi guys, Con- uh, concentrate on asking Lily questions." <laughs> <laughs> you see, like this one. Don't you dare, Yixing. <laughs> I'm doing this because of you, you know. It's true. Mm-hmm. We we actually, I think, I'm sure he mentioned this to you. We we invited him. He was like, can we, can we get Liu? I was like, yes, <laughs> of course. Absolutely. He told yeah. me that too. So, um, like we said, our audience, you know, skews younger. I'm probably one of the older ones on there. Um, so, you know, could you tell us a bit about your father. Um, Yisheng, could you tell us a bit about Ofman Wok, the author? Could you tell us um, mm. a bit of his history? But could you tell us about Ofman Wok, the man, and your father? Okay, fine. Okay, so let's begin with his uh, career in journalism. Okay, he yeah. began uh, by being a reporter with the uh, Malay language newspaper Utusan Melayu, hired by our former president, Encik Yusof bin Isha. Now, he was a straightforward writer. He only write about day-to-day issues, including crime. He does not write opinion pieces, neither wrote commentaries on thought-provoking social and political issues. I don't think he was literary-minded, although he had many friends in the Malay literary circle in Malaysia and Singapore. Most of his friends and colleagues remembered him for his ghost stories. As for the insight, he was a charming man, uh, unassuming, humble, handsome and kind. All his life of the party at social functions, and all this surrounded by people as he had many interesting anecdotes to share, be it his childhood in the kampong, teenage years during the Japanese occupation, his journalism days during the years of emergency from 1948 to 60, when he was embedded with the British soldiers to hunt down communists in some of the jungles up in North Malaysia and even his early entry into the political arena. He also loved listening to all genres of music. So after putting like a 10 to 12 hours 
of ministerial work and political responsibilities. He wound down by listening to Joget, Gronchong, songs from Western musicals, Tom Jones, Engelbert Humperdinck, but he tends to gravitate towards jazz. Mostly Louis Armstrong, Count Basie, uh, Alice, Ella Fitzgerald and Nancy Wilson, just to name a few. He also loves watching all types of movies, but preferred um, war, crimes, uh, Western and horror. He was also an avid reader from comics to serious subjects like war, politics, crime, and of course, ghost stories. Is this, is this actually his copy? His copy. Wow. I'm so scared to touch it now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. I read three stories and just threw the book aside. That, that's not what I'm scared of. I'm scared of because it's such an old copy. So I'm scared of <laughs> no, Okay. You want to know what drove him to write ghost stories? Mm. Okay. Everyone knows. Malays love ghost stories. So his boss, Nchit Yusof, asked him to write them to boost the circulation of Utusan Zaman, a weekly Sunday edition of the Utusan Melayu. In my opinion, he was a talented writer. It was amazing that he could come back home after a hard day's work and still put in an effort to write ghost stories because I think it took uh, incredible imagination and creativity. Uh, needless to say, the San Zaman sought to triple circulation. Mm -hmm. And my father did tell me that some husbands even wrote in to ask him to stop writing these stories as their wives, daughters, and mothers are afraid to go into the back kitchen or bathe at the wall after sunset. <laughs> Don't forget, this was during the 1950s, right? Bathrooms are outside. <laughs> back kitchen, outside, not in the house. I have to say, that's, that's a mark of a really good horror writer where you get letters that you have to please stop. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Next, what are you going to oh, ask yeah. me? No, I was going to, I was going to say, because like, you know, it, <laughs> it's amazing because he would say, I was reading his biography or so, and even he was saying like, he would write at night. And I think this is the only point where I can say that I have something in common with um, one of the pioneers of telling ghost stories in Singapore and one of the pioneer politicians, which is that he used to write at night and he used to scare himself. Yeah, scared himself to bits. <laughs> and I guess, I know being in the quiet and eerie atmosphere where no one else around, that more or less gives not only him, but other writers inspiration Yeah, yeah. to write more, to write more gory details. To add in more horror, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I mean, that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I love also because I was reading his um his biography and he was saying how um he he used the term I like how you said uh he had a creative mind and everything. He, the term your father used was a fertile imagination mm. and his own childhood stories as well. Yes, and you know, having read his stories, I really cannot tell which were his own creation and which were true. Really. Yeah. Did he like when when you were younger? So he never told you any ghost story of his own ghost stories when you when you were younger. No, because he was hardly at home to Are begin you? with because of the long hours put yeah. in work, either with Utusan, or even when he was, uh, you know, uh, in politics. Mm. So talking like that was very rare. Ah, okay. Mm. Well, you know, there's. Yeah. whole collections of his work now yeah uh, yeah i do like how in the preface or so he was like can you guess which ones are my stories which ones i came up with and which ones my friend told me mm. still can't guess i still i have no idea which ones were his and which ones were yeah. his friend's stories did Yisheng respond to the question yet Kyle? yeah sorry did Yisheng respond to the question yet? Yisheng, wake up, Yisheng. <laughs> no, he never really responded. He's just typing like the bio. Uh, so okay. Yisheng basically said, the guy who invited Park of Man to start writing ghost stories was actually Singapore's first president. Yeah. 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 Yusuf, Yusuf. Yusuf. yeah. So, uh, so let's, there's some comments that are coming in. That's mm -hmm. fast. So yeah, it's actually quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, there's some love. Uh, that's coming in from Canada, oh, as wow. well as uh, Lily's supporter. I'm here because Mrs. Offman's daughter believes her mom is the coolest and we all agree here. <laughs> Who is this? I don't know. Uh, Ru Rush Rubin. Is that someone you know? <laughs> I don't know, but all the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, great supporters. <laughs> yeah, and then some supporters from Canada, 
that listens to us on Spotify. Oh, Thank nice. you for the support. Uh, yeah. No, that's wonderful. Um, I wanted to ask so then. Lily, wait, wait. What? There's oh, one more. Oh, there's you... one more. Actually, one of our listeners do, do, do read. Chu Kapio is saying, crazy artist, the Guardian uh, and Under the Banyan Tree are my favorite stories from the book. Currently, oh. currently reading Moss in the Jungle, which is this one, right? The Guardian, the Guardian was... I can't remember whether the Guardian was collected in the Moss in the Jungle or not. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, I also be... cannot remember because yeah. I don't. I mean, truth be told, I don't read ghost stories. You know. <laughs> I love that. My yes, goodness. it is. It is. It is. Okay. It is. It yes. is. It is. Oh, I know my favorite is definitely inside there. So yeah. Um. No, but I wanted to ask you, Lily. So what was it about your father's writing that you that you that you connected to the most? Okay, I delved into writing way back in the eighties and nineties, but mostly. Uh, I wrote about uh, travel stories about the off-beaten tracks in Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, truth be told, I don't read horror or ghost stories. They do you know, instill <laughs> a fear in me, which could cause my imagination to run wild. And an overdose of adrenaline, which is not good, actually. <laughs> However, when I decided to compile my father's works, I had to read and reread every story countless times before they went into print. And that was how Malayan Horror came to be published. Now, I found the stories interesting as they gave me an insight into my father's childhood, mm. growing up in a typical Malay kampung with a typical Malay upbringing. It um, also gave me an insight into the Malay mindset, uh, their superstitions, their cultural beliefs, living in a kampung in that era. Mm. Perhaps one form of entertainment then would be to listen to stories told by family, elders, neighbours yeah. and friends after dinner and coffee was served. In that sense, his writings evoked and resonated with the Malayness in me. Mm. Through this, I feel a special kingship with him and I feel close to him no matter where, where I am. Oh, mm. yeah. That's wonderful. So I'm, I'm very happy that He's, that I that he has chosen me to carry on his legacy. Oh, we will get to that in a minute. Yep, I want yep, to ask yeah. you about that, but I I do think it's very sweet. Like when you talk about like how, you know, it your your father's writing kind of gives you that sense of what the kampung life was like then, mm. of sitting down, drinking coffee. Yeah. Like even he, I, I was reading in one of the prefaces in the collections, he was saying like, you know, it would be like, go sit down, some people have coffee, some people mm. have cigarettes, and the stories mm. are coming out, everything. Yeah. And like, it almost feels like that, like what he brought from that, what he took from his kampung time, kind of carried on, mm. even till today also. Mm -hmm. Not as much, but it's, it's still there as so. well. Yeah, in a way, I guess. But nowadays, you know, young people, they get distracted by Netflix, <laughs> me included. Uh, <laughs> what's, on, what's on, you know, me watch, mm. what's on Spotify. Yep. And maybe there's not much ghost stories telling that it's original mm. from within their circle of friends, families, yeah. relatives. You see, most of it will mm. probably be um, taken from books they read, or yeah. horror shows on TV and cinemas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a, I, I agree. That's exactly why we mm. started this as well because we wanted to do that. Yeah. Well. It's it's that storytelling kind of mm. vibe that your your father gave off in his writing and everything. I think that kind of yeah it, yeah because you know I I did I did tell him when Malayan Horror was published and it was a success. I told him that. You know, I want to brand your name as a ghostwriter. You have already left politics. Okay, let's do this. Let's, because he was with Sentosa Development Board mm. and he knew the people there. So I yeah. said, why not? On Friday night, Saturday night, we'll do a ghost tour on Sentosa. Okay. For a limited group of people, say maybe 15 at the most, yep. and for those above 12. Mm. We'll get into that little buggy, you and the driver just drive around the island and you stop at certain spots and we'll get some stuff from, you know, Sentosa or even volunteers to throw, you read one of the stories and they'll throw stones or somebody in white just rushes through, <laughs> you get loud screams, you know, <laughs> from Kaka, you know. <laughs> and I said, I promise you, I'll wait for you at the jetty, I'll sell your books. I promise, we just do once a month, 
Friday night, Saturday night, and then I'll take you out for kopi and supper. <laughs> you think my father would buy that? He says, no. <laughs> <laughs> you see? What can I do? The man doesn't want to be branded. He doesn't believe in branding. <laughs> and we're talking 90s here. <laughs> Ah, yeah. See, we Isheng and I were you mentioned this to Isheng and me yes, last time when we were speaking. Exactly. And Isheng said, Your father could have been doing Halloween horror nights yeah. before Halloween horror nights. Exactly. The man just doesn't see <laughs> <laughs> what Osman what branding can do. <laughs> okay, la, he can tell stories. Yeah, he Maybe can tell stories. Brand, branding not really his strong suit, but he can tell stories. And that's a more important yeah, thing. Yeah, I think, you know, that would be fun, you know. Yeah. After Sentosa, we can go into Chinatown, you can go to Kampung Siglap, yeah. you, can do, you know. And, you know, he's got a story that was um, about the, uh, I think it was the apparition at Tanah Merah Camp. You can even go to those places mm. uh, where the paranormal group, I don't know whether they were then formed or not. Can yeah, go to all those ones. haunted places and tell his, read his stories, you know. Mm. But I guess for him, that's not a nice way to spend Friday night and Saturday mm. night. Lah. You know <laughs> what? No, from 9 to 12, you know, to do this kind of thing. Lah. Never mind. <laughs> to be fair, I do see where he's coming from. Yeah. So I don't like work, go the whole day, yeah. and after at night, you yeah. want to go here. Yeah, okay, lah, fair yeah, enough. Fair enough lah, you know? <laughs> he's already in his 70s at that time. So <laughs> what am I... Complaining about already it. as it is, yeah. and this is the long running joke between yeah. us and our audience. Yeah. When we do episodes of Ghost Maps, he will go to huh. these spooky spots and then like film the visuals. And then for the first couple of times, he asked me, You want to go? I was like, No, I don't. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's not asking me already. So I he's mean, like, yeah. yeah, you have to go eventually. Eventually, like. eventually, eventually. Go, we, we've yeah. got dares with our audience. If we can get like certain numbers and everything, I will go for him. Until then, no. no I, need, huh? I 100% agree with your father on this one. Oh, so fair enough. Okay, okay. But I'm telling you, uh, these things, they do exist. Oh, it's just yep. that we cannot see our naked eye. But if you are lucky enough to have what they call it, third eye, third mm, eye yeah. sometimes you can see, sometimes you can hear, sometimes you can smell, mm. sometimes you can feel the yeah. presence. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll name Macritchie Reservoir. Ooh. Yeah. That's so is a this a story time? Well, you could say that <laughs> it's a haunting nest for Puntiana. Okay. Um, they can appear to you as a lovely lady, and you may just like you know dismiss it. Or you, and I tell you that when they are near you, mm -hmm. it will be fragrant, smell of natural flowers, oh. not bottled perfume. And when they are far away from you, rotten smell. Oh, because yeah. I like I've heard. Different versions of that. Sometimes it's uh, in the closer. Right? Wait. Oh. Win. Wait. <laughs> if they decide that you are a good place, you, you are in a good place, and they are also in a good place to enter you, <laughs> they might not leave you. <laughs> leave with the Puntiana. Okay. <laughs> I, I promise you, I won't go jogging at my retreat at night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even go jogging. I don't even go jogging near my house. No way am I going to my retreat. <laughs> so it's okay. I see. <laughs> you can run faster, lah. No, I I don't want to find out. I don't want to find out whether I can run. No, faster. you you know oh. that there's kaka there. You run faster, la. But that's the thing. You clock your bounce faster. If I know that there's kaka there. Whether they can, if they can catch me, now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They can fly. Yeah, yeah. they can fly. They can just uh, suddenly appear in front of you. What are you gonna do, Win? What are you gonna do, Win? Kaka. Except your face. <laughs> Last Come time. home with me and watch Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Kaka, you got Netflix. You want to share? <laughs> you can find out which shows you like. Yeah, all I, my literally, my last thoughts would be like, Lily was right. <laughs> probably shouldn't have done this. Probably, like. this probably. One, I, I shouldn't have listened to Carl when he said that my fitness would be better. <laughs> so, so speaking of stories, right? Do you believe in like saying her name? Because like, some some of our listeners say that you shouldn't say her name at night. That's why they use Kaka, Fatima, Rocker. And, and well, there was one Miss more. P. Like, Miss P. Yeah. Miss P is the famous one. I call her Chick P. Chick P. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I heard of that before. Well, okay. I've seen one where I live. It was just before the morning prayers. Uh, the lights in my bedroom were on and suddenly I see this white cloth which I can see through flowing. In your room? Just oh. outside the window, my bedroom window. Mm. And she was like floating by. Mm. And I could see the sky in between her clothes. And I said, oh, I better keep quiet. Stay still. 
But that's my experience. I, I'm not going to ask for address, but what floor is? I'm um, on the seventh floor. Is this, okay. this is like a HDB. Yeah. yeah. Was, was this very long ago? Um, about four years, five years ago. Oh my god, this yeah, relatively recent. <laughs> yeah, and the area where I live is full of trees. Oh man, oh. <laughs> full of trees. And on one occasion, at about three in the morning, I heard a hysterical laugh. I thought it was a night bird. What night mm, bird? Yeah. But this is not the call of a night bird. Mm. This is a screaming hysterical laughter mm. from left to the right. Yeah. And I smelled something very fragrant, like the scent of uh, jasmine mixed mm. with lily. Mm. And I just flew away. Mm. But I guess when you're in this kind of a situation, you shouldn't panic. Yeah. Right? You just stay calm and just recite prayers. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. This is why I really shouldn't see them. Ah, why? Okay. Because I, I stay calm. Mm. Cannot. No, cannot. You run. Uh. I'll, I'll run. No, but it's like outside though. <laughs> Like if you run, it knows that you. He runs yeah. around the bed. But yeah, <laughs> if you run, you run. It will know that you. It saw yes, you. Yeah. So no, you just I, act as if you didn't see it, yeah, Exactly. No, but like I. Okay, my first instinct is to close the window. <laughs> I won't even go near oh, the window. Yeah. yeah, dude, they can fly. I yeah. know. So it could probably just go through the window. Yeah, because it was, a, you know, the attention. Mm. She caught, or you caught her attention. Mm. At, at okay, maybe I won't run. Maybe I will. As quietly as I can walk to the toilet, then lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be better off just staying below the bed. <laughs> yeah, just just keep quiet. Yeah. That's probably what's gonna happen. Like, sit in one corner, just keep quiet, and <laughs> cry a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> then when when you survive it, then you can make it into a horror story. And I, I like how you said you you won't read ghost stories because you're scared, right? Yeah. I'm probably a bigger coward than you. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm probably the biggest coward in the world. Like, so it, <laughs> don't worry. You're gonna seem very brave compared to me. <laughs> oh, but Okay, okay, okay. Bef- before we get to more stories, but also kind of talking about more stories, can you tell us how you compiled your father's stories? Because we were talking earlier and there might be another story in this as well. Okay, let me begin with uh, the first book, Malayan Horror. Yeah. So as soon as I obtained my father's permission uh, to compile his works and got them published. I flew to Kuala Lumpur to meet up with the Utusan's chairman, Datuk Khalid. Mm. And upon receiving his permission, I collected uh, all this, uh, to collect and compile all the stories from Utusan Zaman, from Mustika and Mingguan, Malaysia, uh, you know, without having to pay the publishing rights. Mm. Mm. And that was, it went smooth sailing, although the executives who were present at the meeting also proposed an idea to also collect all these stories and book them into a collection, like 10 stories per book, thin mm. copy for their library. I just said, no, I think it wouldn't work. <laughs> I mean, it's my idea. <laughs> so can just, I said, let's get on and see how Malayan Horror does. If it's a success, we'll talk again. That's yeah. what I said, right? Okay, mm. anyway, after the meeting, an office boy was assigned to take me to Utusan's warehouse where all the papers were stacked high from floor to ceiling. No digitalization then. Mm. We're talking late 80s. Yeah. Fortunately, he was able to locate and sift through the relevant newspapers quickly. And the task was completed by 6 p.m. I wanted to know, I said, what, what's the hurry? Why must finish by 6 p.m.? He just said, hey, look, everyone knows lah, this warehouse is haunted, you know. And then after sunset, uh, an apparition of a Chinese woman would appear by the staircase leading to the second story of the warehouse. So you can imagine how both of us are you know, collecting papers and sitting through and just running out before 6 p.m. I'm like, OMG. And then after that, the next following day, I met up with my father's best friend and ex-colleague, mm. Maju Hussein Amit, and together we went to Dewan Basa and Pustaka in Kuala Lumpur to select stories that were all in this bounded copies of uh, Mustika magazine, and they mm. were dated from 52 to 56, mostly set in Malayan settings because that was my father's and my goals mm. and as well, not to just do Malayan horror, 20 yeah. stories from 52 to 56. So these stories were in Jawi script. I can't read Jawi. So Haji Hussein said he didn't mind. He wrote them in uh, Malay 
the Romanized Malay, mm. and uh, how we selected the stories, especially, you know, I, I, I asked him, you can read Jawi, I cannot, but I'm just looking at the illustrations of these pieces. If they got hantu face, that means that is Osman Wood, lah, punya ghost story. Said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Haji Hussein rewrote everything in the Romanized version, and then back in Singapore, I asked and was very thankful that my former Malay language teacher uh, at NJC, Cikgu Suratman Markasan, transcribed them into modern Malay language with new spellings. And after that, I asked uh, a friend, uh, Mr. M. M. Basalama, translated them into English. And my classmates at NAFA, uh, Jacob Ang and Guat Ing, did all the illustration for Malay and Horror. The other books, they were all straightforward. They just needed a translation from Malay to English. Mm. So that was pretty easy. And then after I compiled everything, I happened to, I had to find a, a publisher who wanted to publish this story. So I met up with Daisy Williams, and she was with Times that time. And she introduced me to a representative of October's uh, Publishing, mm. who is the publishing arm of the Heinemann Group in Asia. Yeah. And so after meeting that big honcho, um, who agreed to publish the stories that Malayan Horror went uh, into print and it turned out to be a success. It went through five reprints. Thank mm. goodness. Yeah. And we also participated in the Singapore Book Fest because there's momentum, right? Mm. As well as the Malaysian Book Fest in 1991. And I also got that to appear in a Malaysian TV program called Selamat Pagi Malaysia and also on their local FM station. He actually did a talk and also a signing event at Kinokunia and MPH in Malaysia. Of course, we both felt elated and satisfied, but I think my dad was more amused that his ghost stories <laughs> actually, you know, his other times were a success. He's like saying, who wants to read ghost stories <laughs> now in the you know, 20th century? He's, like, it, I, another quote from him from, from his biography I remember reading was, um, yeah. what was it, huh? I never imagined that they would be compiled into a book mm. and become a bestseller in Singapore decades later. See? What was his reaction like when you told him that you wanted to do this in the first place? He will give his usual laugh. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you want to do that? Why? <laughs> and I told him why. I said, I'm going to quit my job to focus on this, you know. He says, hmm. Okay lah, if you want to do, you do all lah, from A to Z. <laughs> I said, don't worry, don't worry, I'll do everything. <laughs> you, when the time comes, you just autograph, give talks, take photo, okay? Okay, I'll try and get you gigs, I said. That's <laughs> why in Malaysia. So the, the translations all he never saw? Everything you oversaw? I did everything as I promised. And I <laughs> said, okay, this is the last editing I'm doing. You read it, just to make sure spelling, grammar, okay, okay? That's all he did. Yeah. Journalist, okay, yeah, yeah. I even chose the cover for Malay and Horror. Oh, all no. my discussions, uh, rights, royalties, all I planned. And every time we have a meeting with other publishers, he'll say, talk to my manager. <laughs> She's the one who decides everything. We, I think we earned close to like 10K that's not bad. for the three-day sales. At, uh, that's our royalties. And uh, I said, okay. Bapa, you take four and a half lah. I take the remainder. He says, why? I said, because I did all the work for you, you know. I flew to KL. I didn't even, you know, uh, ask you to compensate my air ticket, you know. Also, hotel also, you know. I pay everything from my own pocket. <laughs> so, can or not? Can or not? <laughs> can. But we also negotiated. Second print onwards, 12%. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so, so, uh, Yisheng is actually adding mm. more details. He says that one very cool thing about Lily's project was that she did it before Russell Lee's True Singapore uh, Ghost Stories became a thing. I was just uh, about to ask. And she saw that the ghost stories had potential in becoming popular uh, and seized the opportunity, la, which it did, mm. right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and it also ties into of, of one's uh, walks uh, fascination. It's like, you got people want to read. La. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People want to read. La. So, um, Ishan also said that he really wanted to have illustrations uh, in the latest book, A Moss ah, in the Jungle. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, lost lost touch with the artist. Lost, lost yeah. in touch with the artist. So, a bit hard to do that. But no worries. 
So Ishan also said that um, we have to remember that in the 1950s, right, when he was a journalist, he was surrounded with other Malay journalists who wrote very literary works, mm. like not non-horror. La, yeah. Right? And then they, they basically looked down on his ghost stories yes. and it wasn't something he saw as passion. It was just a job. Mm. But he had a knack for it, la, like yeah. telling ghost <laughs> stories. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but ironically, this uh, these stories translates even better in English yeah. uh, than a lot of the contemporaries, which is a literary masterpiece. Mm. Yeah, and uh, according to Yi Sheng, he said that. What is it? That no one in Singapore or Malaysia seems to have written horror fiction before him. He's probably the yeah. first one to do it, He's and like, this was nineteen fifties. Yeah. I think people in the 1950s they're a bit more pantan they're a bit more scared of all these things these things are very very real to them you stay in kampongs all these things you can see them it's not like overnight it's very rare to see I mean, so, I'm still quite pantan so now. to write about it and to be the first one there's something yeah, else yeah. that's quite a feat I must say yeah it is <laughs> I, I remember I remember we were talking about this like I, I mentioned to you we were talking about your dad's work when um, just, I, either when A Moss in the Jungle came out or just before because we watched like, um, I think it was a presentation by our friend, my friend Victor Ocampo, where he was talking about how like, there's a, when you're looking at like speculative fiction in Southeast Asia, a important point was your father's work. Mm. He was like, as far as we can tell, nobody else was writing mm. it before this. I see. Yeah. And you're, yeah, you know, the, mm. whether he likes it or not, now it's a branding. La. Yeah. La. <laughs> <laughs> You got your way. You got his window. <laughs> it, no, because I, I remember pointing this out to you. I looked at, when you passed me this, I looked yeah. at this. And then, first of all, I was very scared. Mm. Because all the copy, I scared to mm. damage everything. Mm. Second thing, I was flipping through. I remember seeing, I don't know whether you all can see this, it's a bit far away. Lah. But the it's the drawing of the anklets. Mm. And that's how I realized that I actually had seen your father's book when I was younger. Mm. Probably didn't read it. Mm. Probably too scared. Mm. So I seen it lah, but like didn't read it. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I think I've seen the Malayan horror horror one in my secondary school uh library. Yeah. I flipped through it. I mean, as a kid, you always go to the horror section. Uh. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I did <laughs> again because I, was, I definitely didn't. <sighs> yeah. Um can can we again we're not gonna mention where you stay. Yeah. But can we get one more story from that side? Can, I, I know you got can. quite a few, so I'm just ask for one more first. Like one day also, this taxi driver, I, I, middle age lah, you know, and he mm-hmm. says, "Hey, you stay brittle, you're not scared, ah? Why is it to be scared? All lighter dark, see? Even got security guard there, you know. Uh, you know, eh, one night ah, I was very really tired, you no know, driving taxi, so I came to this like a rubbish dump there. So I thought nobody, even the guard is not there. I thought I'd just take a nap lah in my mm. taxi. He says, "Ah." just put my head on the steering wheel and suddenly a black figure fell on my windscreen. Huh? Yeah. I said, are you sure? He says, yes. He said, ah, yeah, you know, say, I, I'm telling the truth. Why should I lie? But this is what happened. And I said, what did you do? Did you go out to see? And he says, no lah. You might be mad ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just ran up like quickly drive my taxi, you know, all the way after I never come back to Bridal View. Ah, mm. You know, even if I says, you are one of the rare ones who stay here. Like, I'm in this location. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. N- n- Nobody yeah. caught that, yeah, yeah. right? No, 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 no. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then he says, like, I don't come back here. You are the rare ones lah, who brought me back here. Lah. I said, don't worry, lah, uncle. Now I've got a lot of lights ready. You know, like, they don't come. Lah. You know, I said, oh, okay, lah, okay. Lah, you know? But I just tell you. I tell you. I said, yeah, okay. I promise I won't go to rubbish dump after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? You know? I, I've been to that area. I, I won't go anywhere after mm. that down there. That, yeah, that area is pretty pretty creepy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like how just now when we were talking is, before it started rolling, you told me about the taxi driver telling you this, the figure falling, all that yeah. you left out and then you left for all I'm like, ah. it, it, is that the is that the same place as the just now the story you tell where the kaka fly past? Same. Yes, yes. Oh, that damn. was from my bedroom window. This oh, is the rubbish God. dump opposite. Oh my god. Wait. Like so, he just parked his car in the red, yeah, and then yeah, he, he just, just sleep. <laughs> parked there, he was just you no know, put his head on the steering wheel and yeah, sleep. Right, yeah. Out thumb, and then he looked up and said, "This black figure just fell on the windshield." But the windshield not damaged. No, not damaged. So there is something that is yeah, yeah it's not yeah. of this world, Yeah, la. it's not of this world. <laughs> said, you know. Oh man! Wow! 
But I I I must say that like it really is a tough job la, for the taxi, taxi drivers, drivers yeah. especially they drive night shift right, yeah. and and they are very garang. I have like gone for night walks ah. I've seen taxi driver parking at like really like secluded roads. They're just sleeping. Mm-hmm. Then someone wind down the window, then they sleep like wow, shook. I mean, but like bro, you're not scared of ghosts ah. <laughs> If you're driving the whole day, chances are like yeah, yeah. you're just too tired and you're like, too, too. okay lah, come, 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 come. <laughs> too, too tired of the ghost. Like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I Fair I like to think that the uncle right when the thing fell, his first thoughts were why you wake me up? I trying to sleep. <laughs> no, I think he was clearly in panic mode because he couldn't figure out what it was, and you know chances are he must have said, oh Misty, ini antu ah. <laughs> In, in the middle of the night. Yeah, in the middle I of the think, night. I think, yeah, you know, the first it, conclusion is that. two, three a.m. in the morning, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, somewhere oh, in a yeah. super dark location. Yeah. Not surprised. Yeah. yeah. You look like you've got comments you wanted to... No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, 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 the comments, yeah. yeah. Not, not much. Okay. All right. So, da, 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 da. okay. Now, question for Yixing. Yixing, feel free to jump in uh, at any point. Um, <laughs> but... Lily also, I've got, I wanted to ask this question to you as well. So, how did you guys select the stories to be included in The Moss in the Jungle? I know this is more Yixing side of yeah, things. Yes, right. Yixing did the work. But, I also wanted to ask you, what were your favourite stories that were included in The Moss in the Jungle? And uh, okay, we'll go to this one first. Okay, to answer that, I've got my copy here. Uh, my favourites. Um, I have a few here. I like um, the anklets. Mm. Oh, I that's my favorite. I like yeah. um, the golden lantern. Mm-hmm. I like the skulls of Kuala Banat. Oh, I love that. I haven't reached there yet. Yeah, but mm. the skulls of Kuala Banat, I like. There was another one I remember. Um, I think it was the old house that was probably old house and mad artist were two of my favorites as well. Old house mm. and mad artist. Mm. Yeah, old house. I think it was that one. Okay. Yeah, was there were there stories from the previous collections that you wanted to include? Uh, may I have a look at? I know that the anklets was included in the original Malayan horror, mm. um, and so was the old house yeah. and skulls of Kuala Banat. Did any any of them in there that didn't get into here that you wanted to mm. see in here? Okay, I like the ring seeker. It's mm. not in, it's not included. Mm. Um Teluk Berapit is not included. Among the gravestones not included. See that title sounds great. Among the gravestones. The ghost of the blue house is uh, not included. All for one. Uh Can you remember what the ring seeker was about? Yeah, it's about um roughly this guy who found a ring in his garden. Mm. And it was it looks, you know, old, precious, antique, and decided to bring it home. Mm. And lo and, be- and behold, this ring belongs to a ghost. And the ghost said, you know, you better return it to me, otherwise, you know, I'll kill you. Let's see. What page is that? So, uh, it's just that the illustration uh, makes me scared. All the illustrations were friends la, from Nafa. From friends, from friends, from Nafa, from Jacob. There's only two of two them. Two of them, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, look at this. You see, the ghost came back, the skull came back. Can you show it to <laughs> Can you see can that? You guys can see this? Yeah. Can you see it? Yep, they can see it. Yes, yeah. that one. Yeah. The, this, yeah, this looks great. This, see, that's exactly it. That, like, all these illustrations, right? The more I look at them, the more like, I'm sure I've seen this when I was younger. Mm. So, even though, like, I only heard of of my walks work fairly recently. I have a strong feeling that people confirm have seen it like from ages before. Like yeah, you know, because this on... uh, book came in came out in print in nineteen ninety one. Yeah, we made it. We made it just in time for the Singapore Book Festival. Yeah, I remember seeing. Um, we were looking at the the dates yeah. that were in the book, and you said that it started. We all started working on it like nineteen eighty seven or something. Like that, right? Oh, mid eighty eight. I got his permission. Yeah. So from 88 throughout 89 and 90. God. That's how long it took because of the, you know, the different processes. Oh right? my goodness. Yeah. And then um, everything was done in 19, by 1990. Yeah. Uh, beginning of 1991, then it went into print. I think there was a newspaper article that did not bring it. Okay. Uh, it was highlighted. I'm sure we can look for yeah. it on yeah. 
I think yeah. National Library should have the archives of that. Yeah, part. Olivia from Straits Times interviewed me when oh. she was doing a story about uh, ghost stories in Singapore. Back back then, uh, when they were still doing ghost stories on newspaper, now I think <laughs> yeah, they probably no not so much do now. It. Yeah. <laughs> would love to see it though. Yeah, I would love to, to see that. To be fair, I'm quite sure the papers actually did cover *Boss in the Jungle* when it came out. Also. No, but like I remember, like clearly, newspapers back in the day they actually covered ghost stories. Oh, but now, yeah. yeah, like it's no more. Already. I think they covered like sightings and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I remember. I remember seeing that in the older archives for. Yeah, the streets. I just I just want to add in one thing. When I was reading the anklets, right, yeah. and I knew about his, I, I read through the the his biography and everything, yeah. and yeah. knew about his time as a, uh, reporting about crime, right. Yeah. So I I had a feeling that he put in what he saw in crime scenes into that story. I That's why so. it was so gore. Mm-hmm. I could like visualize his thought process. Like, wow, I'm gonna like write like how like the the ankles is all cut up and stuff mm. yeah it was pretty scary yeah. but I'm pretty sure he imagined in it but he added like elements of his experience yeah. as a crime reporter I'm sure and that's like did. brilliant yeah, yeah. I, that, that <laughs> clear sign of a good storyteller when you take like bits of your life and then you put it into stuff that is literally out of this world like that would make like... a really good short film yeah actually <laughs> it's a very really terrifying short film <laughs> visually yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, uh. so we have some comments uh, oh, speaking of taxi driver, mm. Kelvin is saying that my friend's father was a taxi driver and he once told me that he slept in his car while parked near a cemetery. So yeah, I agree with Carl that taxi drivers are them gara. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's too noisy. Uh, so you need to find somewhere where it's Well, nice there's definitely going to be quiet at night. Lah. Yeah. So Yisheng said that he chose the stories for, for this book, Moss in Jungle, uh, that he thought were good. There were a few the old lady's hairpin at the uh, Topayo MRT mm. that were interesting but we weren't told well so he left them out. But among the the gravestones is included. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he says that he really liked it because it's about a Malay man who loses his wife wife and daughter in a chi- Chinese cemetery. Oh. oh, that's brilliant. Actually, wow. Oh yeah, he's right. It's it's. I think it's one of the you missed it because it's one of the earlier stories as well. Yeah, and spoiler alert, lah, but anyway, the story is already really so long. So, <laughs> And then it turns out that the wife and the daughter have already turned into hantu and are hanging out with the Chinese ghost woman <laughs> in the cemetery. Okay, lah, as long as it wasn't the Chinese ghost woman from the from the warehouse. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> Ayoh. Wow. What does that time close? Lah? Yeah, lah. <laughs> and then, Your passport also. And then... <laughs> This is just Ishing being cheeky, and then he says that I and I can't help wonder, but if Park Ofman was writing an interracial lesbian romance, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's being cheeky. You see that, Ishing? Yeah. What did yeah. he say? I didn't hear that. Oh, repeat, girl, what Ishing said? <laughs> he said, I, I can't help but wonder if Park Ofman was writing an interracial lesbian romance. <laughs> <laughs> The variety of stories also made the selection easier. We had three main sections. Stories set in the 1950s, Malaya and earlier. Stories in Indonesia where Park Ofan was ambassador. And then uh, stories written in the 80s, often dealing with the present versus the past. Uh, example, Hideous Trail, a time travel story. Oh God, time travel. Honestly, I, I'm afraid to say this, but now I'm more and more confident to say this. I think he's pretty much like... Southeast Asian Stephen King. Like, he has, like, a lot of ideas. Like, he's just pumping out horror stories. Like, yeah. 400 over, right? I thought that. I, I think yeah. even more. I think, I think there might be some that are lost la, in the archives. Yeah, I think so. Man. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't imagine writing that many stories as well. Like, in the span, like, what was it? Four years, right? 52 to 56. Yeah, because that was part of his duty. Exactly. <laughs> On top of reporting also, right? <laughs> Working long days. <laughs> 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 Unbelievable. Has he ever like forgotten a story that he wrote? Then you reminded him and he said, oh yeah, I wrote that one. Um, Probably, you know, some <laughs> stories. I won't be surprised because there's so many of them. And I don't think he even had a whole collection that yeah. was uh, republished in all those newspapers, you know. Because mm. when he became a minister, obviously, you know, mm. yeah. the Malaysian government didn't like him. So, you know, he's back in Singapore. And yeah. then he has to focus on his 
political responsibilities uh, under LKY and yeah. the yeah, that, White, right? So, yeah. so it's only after he retired from politics, then he began writing again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And he, I think he churned out some new stories or rehashed some mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. pad it up and to make it more relevant yeah. to mm-hmm. the new era. Nice. And uh, that's about it. I asked him to say, hey, why don't you write the great Singapore novel? I say, write about your colleagues in the cabinet. You <laughs> change their names, their races, and what they do, but put it in the setting of the 15th century. <laughs> and you know, like, hang kwa time, hang juba time. And he was like, Mad. I said, come on, you know. I said, I'll, I said, I promise, I do all the research. I promise, I'll research, I'll research. Basically, basically, you're the daughter and agent at the same time. I give you a good agent. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Nice, nice. I mean, you know, his biography, Never in My Wildest Days. It took yeah. me eight years to persuade him just to, to even think about it. Yeah. I like how when you look at the biography, so he's like, yeah, 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 my daughter, you know, he he downplays it as if it didn't take you eight years to get him to write it. Right? Like, yeah, my daughter convinced me to write this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, it, so did you share anything else on top of that? Uh, no. Okay. Not yet. Yeah, we can move on. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, um, Yisheng, while you're there, just a quick question for you. If you have supernatural, I don't know why I'm looking over here yeah. as if he can see me, you know. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Yisheng, if you have ghost stories and supernatural stories of your own to share, please, please share them. Please. We'll we'll start reading them out as well. Lily, I know you have a few more also. Don't worry. We'll, we'll jump mm. oh, yeah. I'm not eager to talk about it, especially I have to go home, you know, afterwards. It's we, okay. We, okay, how about this? We'll talk about the ones that are not near your house. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, all right. Let's, while Yi Sheng is coming up with his stories as well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this to both Yi Sheng and yourself. Do you think your father had like, um, had, had an impact on how we tell stories or do you think it's more the other way around? Where he tells it the way that we used to tell the stories itself. So he kind of almost uses the style of the way people talk, that kind of thing, when he wrote the stories themselves. I and think... Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. Please, please go, go ahead. What were you about to say? I was gonna also ask. Do you think he's had like an influence on like later writers? Uh, Yisheng also. Please answer that one. I I know you have thoughts on that one also. I cannot say about whether his writing has influence on later writers. Yeah. I really don't know because I don't read all his stories. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> But I think in his stories, conversations they were like day to day conversations as it happened in that time. Mm. You know. So. Yeah. So that itself gives a feeling of familiarity to the readers. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Mm. I, I can, you know, resonate with that. Mm. Mm. So that, that's my take on it. Yeah. Because even, even when you're translated, also, right? I mean, not say I can read Jawi, so mm. I can do comparison, so lah. Mm. But yeah, you get that sense from it as well. Yeah. Mm. It's the sense, like, I mean, like we were saying earlier on, lah, mm. like during the Kampong day, sit down with the coffee mm. and then tell the stories like that. That's the sense that I get from it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Yisheng, please uh, share your stories. If you don't mind, Lily, could you share with us one ghost story that's not set near your house? Okay, this was from a friend of mine who, after our religious class, she was giving me a lift Ayoh. home. But on the way, you know, and she said, hey, it's coming to 11. Uh. I can drop you here and then you can just walk through the, go down the staircase into your block. I said, yeah, no problem. Hey, Lily, I must tell you, you know, this one happened to my girlfriend. I said, what, I what? Know. And she says, you know, my girlfriend came home late one day and she was walking down the steps through, going through to the, her block. She suddenly heard a female voice that spoke to her. Baru balik ke? Which means <laughs> you just got home, is it? And she was shocked because it's coming to midnight. Many trees there, you know, mm. way to the block. She looked around, says, I don't see anybody. And she looked up and there was Chick P sitting down there talking to her, <laughs> asking her, you just came home? <laughs> oh my God. I said, why do you have to tell me this? Because the going to my block, I have to walk down the stairs. Are you? Oh, wait, trees. Wait, so this was the, where, where Chick P was, was 
not my my place. Oh, okay, but oh, okay, at okay, his okay. friend's place. Okay, okay, okay. At okay, his okay, friend's okay, place, okay. but still, you know, yeah, I mean, I can imagine area. it could also it can happen to me tonight. And so in no a la. few minutes, you know. No, no, don't worry. Yeah. We'll, follow, we'll follow you down later. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. Then and then I have to come up by myself. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> We're safe. We're safe. Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling for this kind of thing. We're safe. Yeah. Yeah, but and do you... look at your face. You're scared also, lah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> wait, I'm gonna assume that's a compliment, lah. <laughs> no, you know, like there's this saying, right? That that is always told by other storytellers. Yeah. So when you're telling ghost stories, they are listening in. Yeah. And when you're when you're do- dealing with horror. Mm. You have fans from the beyond also. So maybe they, they like your work, they will just protect you like, okay lah, this guy, I hope so. tell our story. Yeah, I hope <laughs> so too. So Ishak actually has a story, he just, yeah. he just wrote in. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay, so you're off the hook for telling good stories. Kinda, <laughs> it's kind of two. Two, oh. two. Okay. Okay. It, it's very short. So Ishak said that the house that he's currently staying in has a history of being haunted. Lots of weird noises during the seventh month and it was said that there is a little girl ghost who used to wake up guests at random. No. That's just rude. Yeah. But that's creepy. It's also creepy. Imagine like you're sleeping there. Coco, Coco, play with me. Then you wake up, nobody. (laughs) Oh. My love. (laughs) As the Chinese would say, right? (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know if this is the same house. So Yisheng said that one day his grandma fell down the stairs. Oh no. And then they no. said that they, on her buttocks, right, they found a tiny footprint. Oh no. Oh, that is oh, so creepy. Yeah. So I guess it's Ling la. So that the little is girl so kicked. so creepy. That's just rude la. You kick also your elders. <laughs> How could... But then again, if you think about it, if the, the little girl's ghost has been there for like maybe a hundred years. So she's probably older than the grandmother. True. Mm. But still rude. La. Still rude. Also, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to teach a little ghost girl about manners. <laughs> she can be look, she can be as rude as she wants as long as she leaves me alone. That's my stance on this. Mm. So we have uh, one person, Ong Bing Wee. <laughs> <laughs> who's asking where to buy the book. Okay, we will share the details with you at the end of this episode. We so will, stay tuned. Yes. Don't worry, we can put it in the description so you can look at it. So um, this book is, yeah, you can find it almost everywhere. So yeah. don't worry about that. I, uh, it's still available. But if you want to collect the older versions, that one, uh, maybe you want luck. to try <laughs> some other places. Uh. This was this was 1991. These were probably mid-90s, right? Yeah, we could look at 2000. Ah, yeah. 2002, 2006. Yeah. So this one will be probably two thousand or so. Two thousand six. Yeah. So they were published by Horizon Books. Yes. yes. So mm. yeah. So you know, if you want to find these, just so you know, they're close to twenty years old. Yeah. Um, How good to luck. find? How to find? Yeah. Uh, I respect all the collectors out there who are looking for this. Yeah. You probably can get it at uh, the National Library, or yeah, I think your best bet would be at the Lee Kong Chan. Reference library. Yeah, that's in Singapore, by the yeah. way. Yeah, and you, you can't take it out. You just have to sit there and just, you know, read the yep. whole book there. Okay, and then. Nice afternoon. <laughs> Better to go in the afternoon also, to be fair. Correct, correct. Yeah. And there'll be people there. Yeah. But it's deathly quiet in that library. I When when you let me your copies, I remember you telling me, oh, read them at night. You should. Yeah. The night that I tried to read them, raining also. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So how? Got through, uh, got through anklets, then I had to stop. <laughs> Uh, pass it to me, pass it. I'm not scared. One. I'm very um, scared. So, hi, Wesley. Wesley is uh, uh, one, one of our friends who's also a writer. Oh, yes. Hi, Wesley. Uh, Hello, oh. Wesley. Oh, you also know Wesley. I don't know. Oh, you <laughs> but, uh, it would be rude of me not to say hi. Yeah, yeah. That's Actually, true. That's right? true. Yeah, yeah. So, Ishing was saying, as for, to answer your question, as for the influence, right, when he was looking for blood writers, he, he tried to find writers who were influenced mm. by Park of Man, but couldn't, mm. which is very frustrating for him. Um, very good blurbs. Yeah, yeah. And he says that uh, because he wants to republish the work by, so that his work could be able to influence future writers. Yeah. As far as is he's concerned, right? He says that the the other podcaster, Mystery Gem Twelve, right? Mm. Uh, uh, DJ KC Champion, the host, was the only one who's actually very familiar with the work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, because this guy has been doing like horror podcast for like ten over years. Yeah. So I'm sure. Uh, however, when Park of Man wrote from 1952 to 1956, the first Malay horror film Pontianak came out in 1957. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I won't say that it's directly influenced. I'm sure there is like some crossover because mm. the film back in those days probably took like two years to make, mm. right? And it shot on film. Mm. So some crossover, lah, but yeah. I yeah, I imagine like your father probably if if he didn't pick up on like the cultural side of things, he definitely influenced it also. Yeah. Like, because yeah, you we did we did write about uh Kaka for mm. another podcast that we did mm. and you can see also the timelines very close yeah so definitely it was probably around the same time when they were all like eh, yeah 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 yeah. did he Asian uh, Asian X that did he influence the film writers they are not he's not sure mm. but the popularity of his stories probably showed the film writers there is a market for yeah. horror films so the, the filmmakers were like ah like, like mm-hmm. you like ah it can sell it can sell tickets <laughs> He's branding uh, for yeah. all his <laughs> lack of trying. Apparently very good. <laughs> Isheng is saying uh, like you can search for the books in the original Malay too. Apparently oh. they are available. Yeah. Really? Mm. Oh. I don't know. I don't know where lah. Probably National Archives. Oh, okay. I'm sure the National Archives probably has a copy which is yeah. super mm. rare. Yeah. But yeah, it's out there. Mm. Mm. And it's quite interesting also that Isheng like had to look really hard. So, and you look at like the, the quality of the people who gave the blurbs. Uh. It's not like, it's not like it's just one or two blurbs. No. You're looking at several people and it's several people like Glenn Gui who directed Revenge of the... Revenge Love of that Africa. film. Love that Love film. film. You know, you got Kelvin Tong who directed The Maid. Love that film. Love that film. <laughs> I like that one too. Oh, The Maid. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wait, you watched it? Yes, it's I did. so scary. I, I, I was. You, you Wait, have I the courage to watch that it? That one I watched. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, creepy, right? Creepy, creepy, creepy yeah, because yeah. I had others in the house. Oh, ah, sure. okay. Yeah. Or in the house. Oh, yeah. 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 I like how you say, oh, I'm very scared. Go the more and more we're talking, right? The more I realize, right? No, I'm definitely a bigger coward. <laughs> Wait, what time did you watch the meet? It was shown on uh, Channel 5, also and I night. think it was like 9 something, 10 o'clock. One of those features, you know? You definitely. Years back, yeah. Oh, you're definitely bigger me. I watched the meet in the afternoon. Alama. Yeah. And you scared? Yes. I watched it in the cinema. Oh, uh, yeah. I think. And I think Kelvin Tong released it during the Hungry Ghost Month. If I'm not yeah. sure. 2005. If yeah. I'm not sure. Branding. See? Mm. Yeah. And mm. even like Sufyan Hakim down here. So like, I when Yisheng says like, oh, you know, it was, it's, it was hard for to find people who were influenced by your father's work, right? I think if that was the case before, I don't think it's going to be the case now. Yeah. Because clearly, like, you know, after he asked for the blurbs and everything, if, if they weren't familiar with it, they definitely went back, take a look. Or they might have read, like, an early copy of it. And, I mean, those are some serious names. Yeah. So, I mean, being from the film world, being a filmmaker, I think somebody should turn this into a, you know, films, huh? and I, TV shows, huh? I, Netflix. I will, huh? I will have a question about them. <laughs> I will have a question about them. Yeah. Very good. Untapped potential. Um. Okay, so while while uh, Yisheng, again, if you have any more uh, ghost stories to share, please share. We'll, we'll, don't worry, we'll get back to yours. <laughs> no, I have a ghost story, actually. Very fresh. No, not from personal uh, experience, mm. la, but like it just happened this year. Someone just told me. You know how like when you're a horror podcaster, people are like, hey, I got ghost story. You want to hear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty creepy. So this guy, uh, he, I mean, hardworking kid, la, you know, trying to, you know, uh, earn some pocket money to to go to to go to school, right? So um, he worked as at a as a grab uh food delivery uh, rider, but he chose to work at night, right? That's a bad idea, lah. And then he, apparently because he pays better, mm. so now the youngsters also night owl, lah. So he chose at, to work at night. Not just that, right? he chose to work at night during the seven month. Hungry Ghost Festival. Everybody in Singapore, including Malaysia, like, you know, we know that, you know, during this period, like, it gets pretty dirty. Uh, all the spirits come out to play. And then he had a delivery um, at uh, this uh, place in Ang Mo Kio, very old blocks of flat. So, um, when he was waiting for the lift, he could feel like there's something around him. But he's like, yeah, seven months, maybe the mood a bit different, uh, so don't think too much. Then he got a whiff of Frenchy Penny, the smell of flowers. And then the moment he got a whiff, right? You know, now, now like in, in Singapore, in our public housing, right? We have uh, leaves that has 
uh, CCTVs. And mm-hmm. the CCTVs are attached at the level one. They have monitors where you can see what's happening, you know, to yeah. prevent crime. So he saw, for like for a split second, he saw someone in the lift. Like this lady with long hair, just white gown standing in the lift at the corner. And he just saw like one guy and he quickly looked down. And then the moment, and he still waited on the lift. And then the oh. moment the lift opened, nobody there. And then I asked him, uh, so what did you do? Did you run? He's like, no lah. I need to go. Go up the order. I said, then you climb the stairs lah. Then he's like, yeah, but 11th floor eh. 11th floor very high eh. <laughs> I'm like, at this point, I wouldn't even deliver lah, you know. And it's 12 midnight and then, you know, 7 months. Then you just saw a spirit and you smelled it also. Then he was like, no, actually, I just went into the lift. Then I asked him, when you went into the lift, the lift door closed, right? Did you feel anything? Did you see anything? No. He said, but the smell very strong. The delivery was real, right? Yes. It was a real person who ordered. Yes, that. yes. That's the okay. thing that I asked him. Was it a real? He said yes. He 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 the person uh didn't collect, but he hang outside. Then after that they they got marked as collected. Lah. So it was a delivery, but he said he has never delivered so fast. He quickly walked, put, go, took the leave again, go down. And then faster, right, go home. <laughs> after that, I think he go home, then he go pray or something. Mm. But like, I'm like, dude, you really got a lot of balls. Eh? If it was me, like, I would have ran away. Like yeah. then and there. Like red, the smell come, I, I go with it. Bye. I no probably, money is worth this. I probably wouldn't have been very smart. I probably would have tried to run up the stairs. Mm. 11th yeah. floor. Eh? I think by 5th floor, you punch it already. <laughs> right? You punch it already, then the spirit come out. Then how you run? How you run? Offer oh, food. Okay, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> seriously, I don't eat this. I eat vegetarian. <laughs> you die. Then I will say, you wait. I go back, get different order, come back for you. Okay? Don't come back. Then don't come back. <laughs> Worst case scenario, the hantu give me bad review on that. I'm okay with that. Bad review for hantu, I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't want any positive reviews for hantu. You know, when we, you know, when we tell ghost stories, right? it's always like, there's always a sense of like, yeah, it could be fake. Like. But when people like that, like for example, this this guy, he, he told me this story. He was like, "Yeah, I've never seen a spirit in my whole life, ever. Like I've never experienced." <laughs> I love the look on your face, right? Like, 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 ever, <laughs> like like you know, just a regular. Like I, I don't really believe in them, but you know, I I don't you know that's normal lah. That very typical behavior to spirits are. But but when it happened, then he's like, actually, I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah, like there's yeah. always like one incident in your life. You're like, oh, I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean. I can't imagine anybody in Singapore not having anything, even let's say creepy lah, happen mm. to them. I'm sure everybody has it. Whether or not it's something else or not. Whether it's real or not. Yeah. You, you can't tell or you just sometimes think it's, oh, it's my imagination. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right? Calvin says that grab delivery plus night time plus seven month plus the equal disaster plus potential ghost stories. <laughs> Pretty much uh. Pretty That's, much, pretty much. Uh, th- this, these kind of formula, math formulas, I don't want to know about. <laughs> Already, I'm so bad at maths. <laughs> you try to frighten me from, from maths even more. So one, one more an- anecdote that Ishan wants to add is that mm. what's so interesting about Park of Man's story is that we don't see the word Pontianak appear in his story, yes. like Otoyo or Langsue. Yeah. Like, and this is why it makes them even scarier. Because yeah. you know it is what it is, but they never say it. Yeah. This, this is why I I had a conversation with you and Yixing the other day or so. I was telling I and it's it's like what you said, lah, where your father took the 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 way we tell ghost stories and you know, he took that and that's how he wrote in his style. Because I was wondering also whether like, you know, he it was the other way around, whether he influenced because you don't hear that when people tell their stories. Like they don't they don't normally say Pontiara. Maybe they will say it at the end, but they'll say, Oh, then got this mm. like how are you saying like the or the Frenchy penny smell? There's a lady in white, everything. Mm. So I I even wondered whether that was the case or so. But yeah, because yeah. that, that I, me and Yisheng had this conversation also a while back as well. Before we even started talking about doing this, we had this conversation a while back as well. Um, were there any more comments? No, but okay. Yisheng, I think Yisheng has a treasure trove of ghost stories, man. This one like quite creepy. Yeah. Hey, so Yisheng says that <clears throat> we used to have. My brother's twins staying uh, in his place. Mm. So they slept in the same room that his grandmother died in. So I'm thinking like oh, this, no. old, this house is the same house. Ah. So the, the twins that were sleeping there seems really restless. And then they got a psychic 
to come to the house to check. And then he said that there was an old woman living in the same room as the twins. Uh, but it wasn't any like, like an ordinary one. It wasn't his grandmother. Oh. It was a woman from the Qing dynasty in Qing dynasty costume. And it seemed that to be very attached to an antique Chinese chair that his parents bought. Oh, wow. So anyway, like the basically the psychic managed to get uh, get rid of her. Yeah. So what happened to the chair? Did you keep the chair? Or you sell the cash converter? I I mean, if the psych, <laughs> to be fair, if the psychic got rid of the lady already, I'll keep the chair. I don't know. Maybe you have to get rid of a chair? No, what does I keep got rid of the lady? That means the chair is damn valuable, you know. Qing yeah. Dynasty. Eh? Yeah. That's why I would keep the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Invite only this kind of thing. Still keep the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have a question for yourself and for Yisheng. So Yisheng, feel free to jump in. <laughs> but if you've got more ghost stories, keep them coming, please. Um, you know, what are your thoughts about... I mean, like you said, you don't read horror in Southeast Asia. Lah, but like, you know, just the idea of ghost stories in Southeast Asia, how do you think it's different here as opposed to like say, you know, in the West and everything? You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think within Asia and Southeast Asia, there are common uh, spirits, ghost legends mm. because like, I know in Indonesia, Puntiana is Kuntilana mm. and Thailand is Nangnak and mm. usually involves a pregnant woman yep. who gave birth to a child and she died and then she yeah. seeks revenge mm. somehow. Um, I'm sure in the West they also have their ghostly figures like um, the Wolfman, yeah. Dracula, Vampire, Headless Horseman, mm-hmm. Altergeist, uh, kind and wicked apparitions um, for both human being as well as animals. Yeah, like you know the dog who um, who died saving his master. Oh, yeah. right. His master was drowning in the sea and he went in. So he, this dog died. Mm. And uh, every evening, whoever walks on this particular beach will see the apparition of this dog. Mm. Mm. I read that one. Yeah. Somewhere. And then the headless horseman is that in certain areas, he, 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 he belongs to, a, I suppose, to the late Druid period. Yeah. And uh, he's violent and he also. Uh, died a violent death and in the evening he'll come riding mm. through the forest without his head or he'll hold his head in his arm. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, that's scary yeah. enough, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's also what I think about. Yeah. You know? Do you, I mean, do you feel like, because you brought up the dog saving the master, everything, mm-hmm. do you feel like there's, in our region, it's more vengeful spirits than good spirits? Um, as far as I know, there are good and bad. Yeah, Seriously, yeah. yeah, the good ones are those who are very much loved by their families, mm-hmm. their friends, mm-hmm. and who wants to save someone who's in yeah. danger. Yeah, yeah, agree. The bad ones are those who are vengeful, and who probably has bad intentions and in harboring evil spirits, and say, "Die, die! I must kill her." Ah, uh, that type. <laughs> Also have. Yeah. No, those are the ones that I'm more frightened ah. of. To be fair, if I see a good spirit also, I'm probably gonna get scared. You you will never know. Yeah. yeah. You will never know. Hey, you just have to be strong to your faith or you know. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. But I mean like I, I am on the firm believer, like, if you died a good person, you will be a good person. If you die yeah. a bad person, you will be a bad spirit. Yeah. And it's it's like humans, right? There's always good humans and bad humans. Yeah. That's same true. thing, same classification. Yeah. So thing. Yeah. <laughs> that is true also. La. Oh, Yisheng is adding on. He says that they still have the chair. <laughs> Can you take a photo and send it to the group? I want to see the chair. Um, I'm scared to see what will be in the photo as well. Answering your question, he says that he realized there isn't a lot of difference between gods and ghosts and monsters in Southeast Asia. Hmm. Uh, the Pontiana is actually uh, revered as a protective forest spirit by some Orang Asli communities. Oh. She may have been a goddess before uh, before the coming of Islam. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, what he really like, read out on a lot of history. Oh, stuff, yeah, he's right? going into this. <laughs> yes. The ghost Nangna is now worshipped in a temple in Bangkok. I've been there. Women and gay men pray to her. Yeah, I, I, I know of that. There was an article about really? it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, generations, they change their, their, the way they perceive all this. What? I had no idea. And forest spirits like Naga can be both positive and negative. Mm. Okay. 
some folks also theorize that the horse-headed uh, tik, tik balang, tik balang in Philippines, mm. I think we, we mentioned it in the podcast, yeah. might be based on the Hindu god. I'm going to slaughter this. Haya, Haya Griva. Haya Griva. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I have no idea what that was. I'm not going to go over there and try as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Jude, actually, our listener is adding on that sea horror stories and laws are much more and interesting. I'm biased, of course. <laughs> Western ones tend to be derivative, except Native American ones. Yeah. Mm. I, I agree. I agree. They're usually like Portuguese, mm. vampire. Yeah. The, the ones that are very like scary close to Southeast Asian is actually the 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 Native American ones. Yeah. Yeah. They they are very spiritual. They, they are very spiritual. Everything is yeah. They cannot they, they also you know kind of like us they don't want to mention the name because mentioning them gives them power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and the, the spirits are the, the one uh, the skinwalker mm. the one that, that they are they, they are afraid of the most they actually used to be witch doctors. Oh okay. Basically Bomos are they mm. turn evil, then they mm. turn to necromancy, then they turn into like spirit-like things. Mm. Uh. Yeah. So, and then he's uh, added on. Right now, I'm also researching local Taoist goddess in Singapore, mm. like Ling Kui Niang of Red Hill. And I found out that uh, she was or- originally a wrestler spirit. She took revenge on the man who killed her. Yeah, I heard of that. You know, there, there, there was a... Actually, this is quite creepy, yeah. Uh. Because <clears throat> creepy things happen uh, when I went there. But uh, Pulau Bin, there was this um, this the spirit, yeah, the German, German girl, girl shrine. Right? Mm. The yeah. German girl who basically died uh, during, just before the Japanese occupation of Singapore. Mm. Uh, that there was a group, the German family, la, and then they, they basically, the villagers buried her because her mm. spirit was restless. And now she becomes like a deity. La. Mm. So yeah, but yeah, okay. there's a lot of paranormal activity uh, uh, apparently now when you go to the the, the shrine. Yeah, I, d- I don't think I've ever seen the shrine. I've heard about it, but I don't think I've ever gone to see the shrine itself. Yeah, it's like a proper shrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Interesting. I, Yisheng, I hope you're publishing all this this research that you're doing. Yeah, because that would be f- that would be very fun to read. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So, Yisheng, again, uh, any more ghost stories, please bring it up. In fact, anybody else in the audience, if you have ghost stories, please share them with us also. Really, do you still have more? No. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, think, I think you've fulfilled your quota for the night. Okay. Thank you, Wayne. No problem. <laughs> if anything, I'm also now scared to hear. <laughs> so, it's fine. Um, I do want to ask, since we were talking about, uh, you know, you were talking about like how some stuff could be good horror film. Uh, some of uh, of my walk stories could be good horror films. Oh, yeah. No need to give details, but, and Yisheng jumped in also, are there any plans to bring Offman Walk's work to an even wider audience? So, books or maybe anything else? There hmm? are offers. Oh. I'll just stop at that. Yeah. Thank you. I wish you guys all the best and Thank we you. really hope Thank to see you. it on the big screen. Thank yeah. you. Now is the time. No, Honestly, it, now is the time it, for Southeast Asian horror. It, Southeast Asian yeah. horror and I also think you know, your father's work as well, the way it's told, it lends itself to all forms of Yeah, all uh, forms of media. Whether, whether it's yeah. translations of his old stories or however else they're going to they can possibly tell the stories. Just the way he told them, just make it so easy for people to adapt it into any. Can other you form. imagine his stories being a game? One of those like eight bit games. I can't, but then again, I I, yeah, I have like very the, little like the, experience. Like, in no, game. like the story of Moss in the Jungle. Mm. You try to get out of the. Oh yeah, actually, be. I really like that story. It's so ethereal, yeah. like it's so like dreamy. Yeah, yeah. So if any game developers out there, <laughs> support local. <laughs> Any game developers out there? Anybody else from other medias tuning in? The Offman sound here. You want to make your pitch, you make your pitch. Yeah, you got to check in with me because exactly. royalties is involved. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Jolene is pitching. Jolene is our art director. She does all the graphics. Uh, Jolene says, there needs to be a Castle Rock equivalent encompassing all of Mr. Offman's story. Mm. Yeah, Castle Rock is basically a, a story based on uh, a Stephen TV King. series based on all Stephen King's stories. Uh. Uh, 
on Netflix uh, somewhere. On Netflix. Oh, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Talk to me. Talk yes. to me. <laughs> the the gatekeeper of all the stories at this yes. point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anything from Yixing? No, he basically add on. Le Arona from Mexico, possibly with Aztec roots, is very similar to Southeast Asia's female vampires. Yeah, Le Arona, mm. like, a, like a witch kind of spirit that drowns your kid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they, they did a film. James Wan produced it. Yeah. Oh, really? Le, Le Arona. Yeah. Oh, I have no oh. idea what that is. That's terrifying. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, we're skipping here a little bit. Uh, Yixing, again, if you, know, you have any more thoughts on Southeast Asian horror versus the West, anything any like that. Ghost stories. Any more ghost stories? Yes, please, Yixing, more from you. Um, if you have anything that you want to add about bringing uh, Open Walk's work to an even wider audience, jump in also. Mm. Um, I do have one question for both of y'all as oh, well. Oh, yeah, here it comes. We ask this it's, of all it's, our it's, guests. It's the big question for all our guests. Yep. Um, Yixing, also answer this one. Lily, what mm. frightens you? It can be anything. We scale up Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. That's our set answer. Yes. <laughs> Three things that frighten me. Okay. Fear of the unknown. Mm. Fear of people. Mm-hmm. Over ghosts. Because with ghosts, you can say prayers. Mm. You can mm, fair chant, enough. You can do your, your, you know, your, your beats and they may just go away. But people with bad intentions, with evil intentions mm, towards mm, you. Mm. And they act upon it. Yep. 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 And number three, snakes. <laughs> <laughs> like any snakes. Any snakes. Wow. Why you? Wow. We scared of chicha, no? Yeah, <laughs> chicha is not a snake, you know. Come on, man, Kyle. No, no, no. I'm just thinking like, like what's the h- most harmless snake there is? Okay, no. the, I suppose the grass snake. I still want one. Yeah. No, like those that in the zoo. So that one you also like, see already, you will get scared. I just la. see and I just get this... Uh, glee. Ah, glee. Yeah. It's the skin, <laughs> right? It's not the skin. It's just looking at them and you know, you know, in prehistoric times when dinosaurs and existed, yeah, yeah. you know, this is part of a species yeah. of dinosaurs but because of evolution or they just get yeah, strung into true, snakes, true, right? True. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. and they're creepy crawly, you know, and, <laughs> and, and people said you shouldn't be afraid of snakes, which yes. I think is true. Yeah. But somehow, um, just looking at them moving in an S formation, you know? Yeah. You do not know where they're heading to, or heading towards yeah. you or away from you. Or if they smell you and they says, wow, this one very delicious. <laughs> uh, just now she had ayam penye, you know, yeah. especially pythons, you know. Ah, yeah, you know. It, it, you, you just can't run away from it. Uh, you don't know how to run away from it. And like the cobra, mm. I mean, their spit is so fast. You can't even say, you know, Gerard Nemo and it, it, you got kid in the eye. And you just die within what instant if you don't have a, mm. you know, the the, the ad medicine to to yeah. get the poison out. So there you are. I, Anything that's creepy crawly like. But chicha also. Chicha, no, I'm not scared of chicha. <laughs> I we need to. I feel <laughs> like we need to. Are you scared conv- of cockroaches? No, uh, I'm not. Yeah. Ah, not no. no it's very strange. I'm not Wait. scared of cockroaches, but hey. I know a lot of people very yeah, scared yeah. of cockroaches. Hang on. What if they fly? I don't like that. Thank you. Flying cockroaches, Thank I don't you. like. I smack them with Okay, then, then we have that in common also. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot. But chicha, I cannot. Flying? Chicha, I cannot. No. The like, sound, uh, oh my god. Man. Hey, I, heard, I heard someone say when they do that, uh, that mm. means they're talking to you and telling you someone in the family far away is going to come to an end. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Really? Yeah, that's really? What that's what I heard. Oh don't my god. <laughs> okay. That's what I said. I don't know how true or not. Wow. That is a really messed up way of telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in my neighborhood, I do hear a lot of chichas, <laughs> but <laughs> it is one of those neighborhoods where every other week, there is a funeral down there. Yeah. Oh. So, maybe I should be listening to the chicha. I, I, I like how like, I'm like having imagination how the chicha communicate. The cousin tell, hey, this one, the uh, relative going to die already. Tell, <laughs> pass the message. Then they pass the message. <laughs> then they check, 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 check. <laughs> yeah. I like to imagine mm-hmm. the chichats have a WhatsApp group. Uh. Not so advanced. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Give them time. Maybe maybe the t-t-t-t is the sound of the phone ringing. <laughs> message alert tone. So, Isheng got stories. Wow, really. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So, Isheng is saying, <laughs> this is a family story. 
His grandfather died in 1952 when his father was just three years old. So the grandmother was left widowed and was quite angry la, at the, the dead grandfather because, you know, she has to take care of the oh. family now. Uh, he had gotten uh, cancer from his opium addi- addiction. <laughs> oh my <laughs> 1950s, God. 1950s, ma. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so she, she said that she wasn't going to make any offerings to the husband because she was pissed off. So she never make offerings to the dead husband. Oh my God. But one year after his, one year, uh, uh, at the year, first year of his death anniversary, uh, Isheng's father felt sick and started saying, uh, apa, apa yao lo. Basically, it translates to father is hungry. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> so at, uh, at, at one point, right, his uh, father's elder brother, which is his uncle, <clears throat> who was adopted, tried, tried to return to his birth family, but felt very sick. And mm-hmm. folks said that it was basically the grandfather being angry uh, as at his ingratitude. Yeah. This was all like Kampong era, and then they stayed in Kampong Henderson near Tiong Bahru in the 1950s. Oh, okay. Yeah. He hasn't answered us on the Southeast Asian uh, uh, horror thing, yeah. but he says that he's scared of styrofoam. <laughs> hit, hit touching it, hit the sound, don't know why. <laughs> My first question to you, Yisheng, is then you go barbecue how? Then if you buy like like food, right? Like like big box of food, right? Then who's going to hold the styrofoam box? Somebody else lah. Then you tap out, tap out also styrofoam box. Not now. No, now the still more got, friendly. still got, if you go the authentic one. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. If you, okay, if you go to the shop and then you buy nasi lemak, sometimes they still use the plastic one. Like, or you buy kueh. It's <laughs> the plastic one, right? Right. <laughs> But they, the center still uses styrofoam, right? Yeah. Sometimes they, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> okay, let's not judge him too much. Not judging. I just like this is so random. Because no, no, because I can actually see what he means when he says the sound. Like shh, shh, shh. yeah, don't lah. He watching, you know. <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. To be fair, your impersonation of styrofoam box not very accurate. No, I, oh yeah, of course yeah. not. But like yeah. But no, I I get it. It's it's almost like. I mean, nails on a chalkboard is the... Mm. Yeah, yeah. That, that probably hits more people, but there are certain things where I hear the sound. It for, I think like it's certain kinds of rubber products that when they're rubbed up against something, they always make me feel... Ugh. <laughs> it's, not, it's not scared, but... Ugh. He says that he used plastic bags as glove if necessary. Very, very, very good for the environment. <laughs> very... Eh. Let's be honest here. If to be fair, that's just styrofoam. But if ghosts come at me, right, and the only way I can keep the ghosts away, right, is to keep throwing plastic bags at him, right? I don't care about the environment. I want the ghost to stay with me and just keep throwing plastic bags at the ghost. I think at one point the ghost is like, you are very bad for the planet. That's fine. <laughs> if the ghost wants to judge me but leave me alone, I'm okay with that. <laughs> that's whatever, whatever gets them to leave me alone. The ghost go complain. Uh. It is guy, ah. Uh. To who any saying to hell. <laughs> this guy cannot. This guy bad for the environment, you know. Okay, lah. I can live with that. Lah. As long as he leaves me alone, can I be? <laughs> Whatever it takes, man, for the ghost to leave me alone. Yeah. Oh, any other comments? No, no, no. Yeah, we're good. All right. Um, anybody else? You all have comments, you all have questions for Lily, for Yisheng. Please bring them in. Please bring them in. Or you can send us a message. Yep. We'll pass it along. Yep. Yes. Um like we were saying, so all these books, out of print, that one is a new. Now, Lily, Yeah. I think a few people have really been asking, Okay. where can we get the Mosque in the Jungle? Okay, Mosque in the Jungle, they're available in our public libraries. Yes. Number two at Epigram Coffee Bookshop at Singapore Art Museum mm. at 39 Keppel Road, Tanjung Paga, District Park. 0102. Now they're opening hours as daily from 11 to 6 30 pm, but they are closed on October 15 and 25th because of Singapore Biennale. Mm. Um, I've seen them at our Kino 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 Kunia bookstores, mm. and in Malaysia, it's in it's at Popular mm. at Mid Valley in JB and Gerak Budaya bookstore in I think it's in PJ. I've seen them in, in Malaysia there. That's, I'm not sure whether the other bookstores carry. Oh, no, that's, yeah, jungle, that's, that's enough places for people mm. to find. Okay. Yeah, so, to, there you go. To we, add on like Epigram Books, uh, 
and including some other local uh, books uh, shop in Singapore, they, they do ship internationally. Mm. But if you can't find them, actually, I just did a quick search. Amazon has it. So I'm pretty oh. sure it ships internationally. Okay. So you mm. want a piece of Southeast Asian horror? Yeah, if you know where to look for them. Some of you all tuning in from Canada, right? Some yes. people tuning in. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, now you know you where go. to find it. So if you want to know like the origins of all Southeast Asian yeah. horror podcasts that is after 1950s, this is where it is. <laughs> Even Ghost Maps came from did, here. <laughs> did, did you say all horror podcasts after 1950s? Before. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course, before. Before. <laughs> Yeah. Uh yeah. So all right. Anybody else? You got any questions? You can send it to us. You can message us and everything. Um, I don't know whether Mr. Kenny Chan from Kino Kunya is tuning in. If he's tuning in. He never in, comment. Uh, oh, okay, la. Or maybe he's using a fake name. I don't know. Uh, could be. Um, if he's tuning in, we wanted to say hi. Thank you for, for um saying all the nice things about it. He, he was part of the production of this, wasn't he? He was, yeah, yeah. Play in horror. So, thank hey, you for the day. Yeah. Hey, Kenny. It's Lily. Long time no see <laughs> since you left Kino. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you go back Kino now, you probably can still find him in the Kino rounds. It there. depends on the timing yeah. and, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, no more questions from anybody else, yeah? Yep. All right. We're all good then. Yep. Um, one more time. Lily, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored to appear. No, no, no we are the like honored one. We, believe me, we we've been. Yeah. We we <laughs> we would have loved to have had you on from the start of Dead Air. Yeah. We didn't think it would have been possible to get you to yep. be on Dead Air. Yep. We didn't even know whether it was possible to get Yisheng on Dead Air, and then you guys came on and. Yeah, you, you saw how excited I was when I first yeah. saw last. So, Absolutely, yeah. and you know, my father turned ninety-eight last Saturday on October eighth. Oh mm, my goodness! Nice. Yeah, and you see the cover here. This is gravestone that reflected his date, oh, the day oh he passed God. away. But it's written in Jawi. Oh, but that, yeah, you can see the date actually. Yeah, seventeenth April, twenty seventeen. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a nice detail. Yeah, that's wonderful. All right, folks. Like we said. Look, Sufyan Hakim said it best. I can't wait for all you horror fans to get your hands on this treasure. It is a treasure. It is a treasure. Yeah. Lily, once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Isheng, we know you're tuning in. You know you've been answering yeah. your questions diligently. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for typing so fast. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for joining us as well in spirit, if not in person. Yep. Um, and for all of you out there, thank you for tuning in. And we really, really like we said, we really, really hope. That's fine. We really, really hope that you guys pick up the book as well. Um, we're going to do our standard closing now. Yep. Um, I shall put on my, my newscaster voice. Yes. Uh, new episodes of Ghost Maps go online every second and fourth Thursday of the month on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and all major platforms. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe now and follow us on social media at Weahantu. That's one word. W-E-A-R-T-H-A-N-T-U. Spell wrong. No, W-E-A-R-E-H-A-N-T-U. Oh, okay. Spell wrong. I see Rain. I see Rain. Can you accompany me to the downstairs to take a cat? Can. I'm going to be scared so long. I think it's a full moon night, you know, out there. can hear all trees and leaves rustling. Why are you doing this to me? I'm not. I'm feeling it. My hands are cold and the... Hey, and my neck is standing lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's them don't be Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like the yeah. I don't want to con, you know, come across know, know. that lady. You know, yeah. And then the smell of Benji Benny. Yeah. Maybe, Tolong, yeah. You all yeah. send me down ah. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely do that. We'll, Thanks, we'll send you down, man. but who's gonna send me back up? It's okay. You're on your own. <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> Thanks, ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you would like to share your own stories. Like all the stories that Lily and, and Yisheng have been sharing, including her talking about her hair standing as we are going to escort her down later on. Thank you. Huh? Now you're putting me in the mood. <laughs> um, if you want to share your stories that could inspire future episodes of Ghost Maps, you can reach us through the contact form on hantu.sg or message us directly through Facebook and Instagram. You can also be one of our supporters on Patreon at patreon.com slash we are hantu. Right. Together. Uh, and three. Two, one. And, and remember, remember just, just because, because they're, they're stories, stories it, it doesn't, doesn't mean they are not true. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank Good you so night. much everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Lily. Thanks, Yisheng.